Hello programmers, welcome to another video. In this we are going to write a program to generate Fibonacci sequence in Java. The most basic way to implement the same is using recursive algorithm but we will see that it turns out to be a really slower one if we provide some higher value to find out some higher term in the Fibonacci series. So I will also going to show you a way to make that program execute faster with another approach. Before we jump right into the coding, let's first see what the Fibonacci sequence is. The Fibonacci sequence is just an infinite sequence of numbers that starts with 0 and 1 and then each number after that is just the sum of previous two numbers. So we have first two numbers by default 0 and 1 and the third term will be obtained by adding these two. So 0 plus 1 is 1. So similarly for the fourth term we will be adding 1 plus 1 which will be 2 and the next term will be 2 plus 1, 3 and so on. So the program we are going to write will take in a number suppose n as an input and return the nth term of Fibonacci sequence. Also we will try to store the complete sequence in one of the array list as well. Now to implement in the recursive way I have written one method generate series the old way. So in the old way what do I have done in the return statement itself I am calling the same method but by passing the previous two numbers itself and uh, adding them both. So this is how the Fibonacci series actually work. The next term is sum of the previous two numbers. So if we want to find the nth term then that will be n minus 1 plus n minus 2. So that has been achieved using recursion here. <clears throat> as it's a recursive call so we need to have some base condition as well. So uh, for that we have used the first three terms as here. So is when n will be less than 1 in our recursive calls, it will not call uh, the same method again but it will return 0 because the first term is 0 and for second and third term it will return 1. So in the main method I have added to uh, system.out.println statement and using local datetime.now this will do nothing but print the timestamp in milliseconds. So this I have done to see how much time it will take to calculate. Now let's execute the program and we can see the sixth term is 5 and but the time taken here is very negligible. In the beginning of the video I have already mentioned as the term number become higher the time taken will be exponentially growing. So if I put some higher number here around uh, 45 to 50 then we will be able to see some difference in the execution. Let's try to find out the 50th term itself. Let me execute the program. So here you can see it has almost taken 25 seconds to calculate the 50th term. From the trend you can see the growth in time taken is going to be exponential. So if I increase a little bit more then it will take a lot more time than the previous one. So why this time is increasing for the execution? It is only because of the recursion because this thing is happening for uh, generate series old way n the same thing will be happening for n minus 1 it will calculate everything from n minus 1 to 1 and again it will calculate from n minus 2 to 1 so as the number progresses to the higher value it will take more and more time so to improve its performance i have written another method where i am not using the recursion algorithm so the input will be sent the return time will also be same which will be long so what we are doing here let's see step by step so here i am declaring three local long variables uh, first one is name as brave next is next so the first two values in the series which are default i am assigning these to these two variables and result i am initializing it to null in the beginning after that for our first two values as we already know are constant so if n is 1 we are returning priv which is 0 for the second term we are returning next which is 1. Now we have we are left with only two conditions one is when n value is less than uh, 0 itself less than 1 itself so that is an invalid input so for that we are handling it in the else we are printing in the console that enter the term number greater than 0 because term can start from 1. And we are returning minus 1L just for the sake of returning a value. So now come to the main logic when N is greater than 2. So if we want to get the third term or any term higher than 3. So whatever N value is there we will be running a for loop for that. So what we are doing in the result we are storing the addition of previous plus next. So that will be uh, actually our uh, uh, next term. And after that to move to the right side of the sequence. In the beginning prev variable is assigned a value 0 which is the first element and next variable is assigned the value 1 
which is the second element in the next iteration priv will be pointing to the second element and next will be pointing to the third element and in the next iteration itself priv will be assigning to the third element and next will be assigning to the fourth element and so on but in parallelly we are having one result variable itself that variable is used to store uh, the sum of priv and net so that same logic has been implemented in this for loop so once this for loop execution is completed uh, the result variable will contain the value of nth term in the fibonacci series so in the end what we are doing we are just returning that result variable now let's try to add one more uh, printing of the timestamp so that we will come to know how much time actually it is taking in comparison to the recursive algorithm now let's try to execute the program using the recursive method it almost took a half of a minute but if you see the time taken by the other algorithm which we have implemented is instant it has not even taken a single second now if we want to uh, store all the elements of uh, fibonacci series in a list that we can also do and uh, print the whole series here so for that i have created this uh, one variable c which is a list of type long so after that in our when n is equal to 1 so whatever the previous value i am adding that to the series and if n is equal to 2 then i'm adding both previous and next to the series so to add all other elements as we have already seen the uh, next variables or the next terms are getting stored in result variable so at the end of this for loop in the last statement i am updating the series by adding result to this series and in the end before returning the result i am just printing the whole series now let's try to execute this program so here you can see uh, it has printed the 50th term as well and also all the 50 term before that so this is the complete fibonacci series you can see all the 50 terms uh, it present in the array list so in this way if we want to pass on this list that also we can do or if we want to access any term at any time we can make use of this array list and access its element using the index number so in this video we have seen like how we can improve the performance uh, over the recursive algorithm So if you like the video please do like share and subscribe thanks for watching